Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar, Total Blower Control, Optimizing Your Process Correctly. I'm Will Stradling from Seaward Equipment. Just a few housekeeping items before we begin. During the presentation, there will be five multiple choice questions to answer by poll vote. You will click on the answer you think is correct, hit the submit button, and we will post the results and move on. To receive your operator and PE credit for this webinar, you must complete the poll questions during the presentation. In addition, please feel free to type in your own questions anytime in the questions drop-down arrow, and we'll do our best to answer them either during or at the end as time allows. To receive your PE credit for this webinar, you must complete the survey evaluation that will pop up at the end. So stay connected until you complete the evaluation. You will need to download the certificate of completion and the PDF of this presentation. They are available under the handouts drop down arrow. If you miss downloading these, contact Sherry and she'll attach them to the follow up email that she sends you. Please be sure to check out our website seawardequipment.com and follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn for more information. That wraps up the announcements. I would like to introduce Paul Peterson as our presenter. Paul is with Atlas Copco. He has more than nine years of experience with aeration blowers. He holds a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from UNC Charlotte. Thanks everyone and enjoy the webinar. Over to you, Paul. Thanks, Will. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today, we're going to talk about control, specifically uh, optimizing and controlling blowers in aeration processes. All right. So, really, when optimizing uh, the control of an aeration system, we can break it up into three important points. First off, don't reinvent the wheel. There's a lot of technology out there available for automation. Um, someone's probably done it before, so use what's available to make it easier. Uh, we'll look at some of the integrated controls in some of the blower technologies that are currently available on the market today. Talk about how those can be implemented in your system. Second, don't partially automate. And what we mean by that is if you're going to automate the system, you don't want to operate some things in hand and some things automatically. We'll look at some good and bad examples, uh, specifically one in California, one in New Jersey here. And then keep separate things separate. When you're automating a system, a system can be made up of many different processes. So sometimes it's not a great idea to put them all together. Uh, if they don't belong together. You can have separate controllers for separate parts of a process. And so we'll look at some good examples uh, and some bad examples of that uh, in Iowa, New Jersey, and Massachusetts. And then we'll wrap with a brief conclusion. So first off, don't reinvent the wheel. If equipment comes with built-in control, use it to your advantage. Uh, a lot of equipment comes with built-in protection. Uh, to make sure that your equipment stays operating well for years to come. You should utilize that whenever it's available to you. And then lastly, don't design it yourself. As I previously mentioned, uh, a lot of this stuff has been done before, and manufacturers and system integrators are the experts, and we're here to help you. So let us help you. All right. When we're looking at the do's and don'ts, we typically say, don't necessarily specify controller brands. If you're buying from a reputable manufacturer, they're gonna be able to support their brand. So if you want to use someone else's, you should probably use a different supplier. Uh, anytime you force a supplier to use uh, a sub vendor that they're not comfortable with or don't normally work with, it tends to lead to a lot of buyer's remorse and can be tough to support once it's integrated in your system. So avoid that if you can. Um, don't specify individual sensors or gauges or you know little accessories within a package generally uh, a system integrator or a blower manufacturer they're going to be providing you with something they know works well they know how to integrate in the process 
Um, so if you're going to trust that manufacturer, let them advise you on which sensors and components to use. And the same thing with the next bullet point, uh, specifying non-standard accessories. Generally, unless you've got a very, very good reason, um, let the integrator and manufacturer make the recommendations. If you're trying to buy and then maintain a one-of-a-kind solution where you've got all these custom pieces that the provider has never used before, uh, it's going to be tough to support down the road. You're going to end up doing all the maintenance and troubleshooting as opposed to the vendor or supplier, and that's what most people want to avoid. But there are several things you should do um, when specifying equipment and looking at process optimization. You definitely want to let the supplier know exactly what you want the system to do. You know, I want to be able to input X on this screen and have it change these valves or have it adjust DO or have it, you know, balance run hours, whatever it may be, whatever functions are in there, let the supplier know. Specify your plant communication protocol. Uh, some plants uh, run everything off digital and analog I.O. Uh, with just hardwired signals, but a lot of plants these days uh, have now upgraded to network communication, uh, mostly Ethernet IP, but there's definitely some Modbus TCP as well. Make sure the vendor is aware of that. Uh, it's not too difficult to add a protocol converter, even if it's not their standard, but we want to be clear about that up front so there's no hidden cost uh, when we're trying to implement. And then obviously specify uh, power supply voltages available. You know, in some buildings on some plants, you know, we don't have 460 volt. Um, sometimes you want to put the control panel somewhere else or a blower somewhere else. You may have different power supplies available in different areas. Make sure the supplier is aware of that. And then always require that whatever controls you're buying are going to be supported locally. You don't want to have to fly someone in from across the country every time you need something troubleshot. You want someone to either be able to remote in or uh, better yet, just come to your plant with a nearby technician. So here's an example of a rotary low blower, a tri-low blower, and some integrated controls that are available in this technology. So this unit pictured on the right has a single 460 volt three phase, three phase power supply. So you connect that power and the discharge pipe and the controller is ready to go. It's everything's wired inside the enclosure, all of the sensors. There's a VFD integrated in that cabinet. And there's a local remote speed control with a local remote selector and a dial potentiometer to control the speed right on the front of the unit there. Uh, if you want to bring in an analog 4 to 20 milliamp signal, that's what that local remote switch is for. But it's a very simple product. Uh, it works whether or not you have it integrated with SCADA or a PLC, or you just run it in hand mode. These come with a basic alpha numeric controller that'll tell you what the discharge pressure is or the temperature, maybe the flow. It'll give you notifications if services do, it'll count your run hours, and then it'll tell you if there's a fault and then what steps to take to correct the fault. And then you can always upgrade to a nicer, more graphical controller that's a little bit more easy to use. And that would allow you to do some web-based remote monitoring. So there's a lot available for a simple old PD blower on the market. Here's an example uh, of a higher tier product. So the rotary screw blower is another positive displacement technology that's typically more efficient, has a wider turndown, and so it's been increasing in popularity over the past 15 years. Uh, this, again, is a plug-and-play solution with a single 460-volt power connection. Uh, this one's got some uh, nifty new wave features, such as a totally enclosed water-cooled permanent magnet motor that's got a much higher efficiency and much lower maintenance. It's got an integrated VFD inside the cabinet. It's got a touchscreen graphical controller, gives you warning indications, allows you to schedule your maintenance uh, even on the controller or through a web interface. And you can integrate that with SCADA over the hardwired I.O., network communication over Ethernet. You can add that local remote dial speed control that we saw on the load blower. And then this offers a standard smart link, which is a remote monitoring service. So if you have an unmanned plant or you work short hours or cover, cover several plants with limited staff, 
you're able to check anywhere you have an internet connection on the status of the blowers. And in most applications, if the blower's down, the plant is down. So a lot of operators find that helpful. Uh, if they're not at the plant, they can always see the status of the machines. And if a machine ever goes down with a fault or a shutdown, they'll get a notification on their phone uh, that allows them to get over to the plant or at least have someone go check it out for them. And then lastly, here's a high-speed magnetic bearing turbo blower. These are generally uh, one of the most sophisticated blower technologies on the market, one of the most efficient. Uh, it's again, a plug and play solution, single point power connection and a discharge pipe. This one has a modulating blow off valve that allows you to operate uh, basically from 0% to 100% flow without any control gaps. It's got built in to the local controller uh, pre-programmed control loops for pressure control on the header if you're using mostly open valve logic or if you're going to integrate this into a total aeration control system uh, you can use uh, airflow set point control on a DO loop from a PLC. These continuously monitor the shaft position of the blower, the inlet air temperature, the cooling temperature, the discharge air pressure and temperature, almost anything you can think of this already has the sensor integrated into the blower, pre-wired to that controller, and pre-programmed to run from the factory. So there's a lot of available controls out there on the market, so you don't have to have someone develop a one-off solution to do what you like. Just contact uh, Seward Equipment, and they, of course, could direct you to which one of the technologies would have the features you're looking for. And then lastly, um, there are process controllers and central blower controllers. So here's an example of one uh, that offers three different operating modes. So there's one to balance the run hours of all the machines. That way service is due at the same time. So you can have one technician come out and service all your machines in one visit to reduce your maintenance costs. It can also do the traditional lead lag sequencing where one blower is running most of the time. Then there's a second priority, third priority, et cetera. And then most importantly, uh, this comes with an optimization mode where it will actually, based on the set point for the process, it will select the mix of machines that are most efficient to satisfy the desired flow output. So this controller knows what machines are connected, even if they're different sizes or different technologies, say a turbo and a screw, and it can pick based on the duty point which machine to run at which speeds. If two machines at 50% are more efficient than one machine at 100%, this controller will automatically use the most efficient option to reduce your energy costs. And if you're not aware, uh, energy costs account for about 80% of the life cycle cost of an aeration blower over time. So that mode's uh, pretty useful. So this is something that's typically separate from process controller PLC that would control your valve logic or control other components in the system. And so this is what we have is the blower controller. So it's very common to have a PLC that controls the mostly open valve logic. It just outputs a total flow required based on the DO set point and the changes in the system with the valves. And then this controller decides which mix of machines is most important for the energy efficiency. So this will give you a higher total aeration system efficiency for very, very minimal cost compared to uh, custom PLCs out there. And this is an off the shelf solution that can be retrofitted in between an existing blower and PLC system. Here's a look at a system where they did just that. They put one of these uh, optimizing blower controllers in between the process PLC and the blowers. Before that was implemented, uh, the blowers maintain the dissolved oxygen in the basins within 11% of the DO set point. Um, here we see uh, under the black bracket, this is after that optimizer had been implemented. And now the blowers are be able to maintain DO in the basins within 1% of the DO set point. And they're using less energy and have fewer swings in DO. So much more efficient process control. 
that brings us to our first question. Will? Thanks, Paul. I will launch the first poll question. What is the biggest advantage to using controls integrated in the blower package? Please choose A, B, C, or D. Okay, about 80% of you have voted. Give it a couple more seconds. All right, I am going to close the poll and share the results. D, all the above. Back to you, Paul. Thanks, Will. All right, guys, make sure you're answering those poll questions so you get your credit for attending. Hey, Paul, we did have one question come in. Yeah. How long have you been using permanent magnet motors? I am not familiar with them. Oh, that is a great question. So they are a newer technology. Uh, you see them in some uh, submersible pumps and in some blowers, uh, not just from us, but other manufacturers. Uh, these actually gained popularity with the advent of the turbo blowers in the early 2000s. So Atlas Copco has been using them since about 2004 uh, in our blower technologies. And the biggest advantage of a permanent magnet motor over a traditional squirrel cage induction motor is that it has a constant power factor. That means when you have a motor running on a VFD, as you slow it down to partial load, typically it's going to have a variable power factor where it's 95% efficient at full load, but it might only be 50% efficient at one quarter load. Well, a permanent magnet motor, it maintains that constant power factor. In addition, by having magnets in the rotor as opposed to copper windings, it's got a higher peak efficiency. So they're nominally about 98% efficient as opposed to 95. And then you maintain that high efficiency uh, above 90%, even at minimum load. So that's the big difference in that technology. But good question. Uh, now we're going to talk about automation itself. And our second cardinal rule of automating, don't partially automate. So here's an example of a plant in California. They have four aeration basins. They had two DO probes per basin. They would balance those. Um, send that DO signal to the controller, which would then control five high-speed turbo blowers automatically. It had that one master control panel, but the big problem was these valves on the airdrops into the aeration tanks were manual, and each tank had a different load. What happened was operators could not adjust the flow into each zone so even if DO in tank one was right on the money at two, tank four might be at four and tank three might be at one. And so they just could not get the system balanced, even though they had most of the right components. What they needed was actually to automate those valves. So eventually they added actuators to those valves, reprogrammed that controller, um, to have those valve position signals. And so they minimize the amount of DO hunting. And DO hunting is when you get those wide swings, your set point may be two, but you go from one to three at any given time. So by automating the valves and the blower control with a single controller, uh, they were able to get this system working properly and maintain their DO set points in each of the different tanks. That leads us to question two, Will. Okay, I'm launching the second question. Why should air control valves be automated?
Okay, we're about 90%. A few more seconds. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close it. And the answer for this one was C, A, B, and C. Back to you, Paul. Thanks, Sherry. I think we may have had a typo in that one, but as long as you're voting, you get your credit. All right, uh, next on the docket for don't partially automate is an example in New Jersey. So here is a plant that had five different aeration trains. They were monitoring DO via SCADA and SCADA was controlling the mostly open valve logic. They had four fixed speed multi-stage centrifugal blowers. These blowers were operated in hand. They would be turned on and off by the operators and then they could manually throttle the inlets to get some flow control. And then most of the fine control was handled by the valve logic in SCADA. It worked just fine, uh, but they knew it was inefficient. Uh, controlling those blowers in hand and uh, old blower technology like the multi-stage centrifugal, they wanted to upgrade to something that'd be more efficient. So they went out and bought themselves two shiny new turbo blowers and a blower PLC that would decide when to turn these two blowers on and off and which speeds to run them at. So all they did was put the blower PLC between the new blowers and SCADA. SCADA still controlled the valves um, on the DO logic. And then these two multi-stage blowers are still operated in hand. So the problem they ran into is half of the blowers are automated, half of them are operated in hand, these blowers are controlled by this blower controller, and then the valves are controlled by SCADA independently of the blower controller. And so this whole system is basically operating on three different brains, the brains of the valves, the brain of the blowers, and then the operators manually turning blowers on and off. You can imagine about how well that was working for them. What happened was the valves were actually fighting the blower controller. So when the DO probe sensed that there was too much air, the valves into the basins would start to close. Well, the closing valve increased the system pressure. This is the pressure and flow curve of a centrifugal blower, specifically a high-speed turbo. What happens when you get higher pressure is you actually get reduced flow range. So when the blower was already at minimum speed, it would increase the flow to avoid going into surge. So then it would deliver more air to the basin, the valve would close further, and it would just rise and rise the pressure until finally the blowers would trip out on overpressure because those valves had almost all the way closed. Then they'd have to go manually reset the blowers and start again, and this process would just repeat itself. That leads us to question number three. Great, thanks, Paul. I will launch number three. What can happen if blowers and air control valves are controlled separately? Please choose A, B, C, or D. Okay, a little more than 80% is in. Okay, I'm gonna close the poll, share the results. D, all the above. Paul, we did have one question come in. Mm -hmm. Does optimizing the controller work for multiple blowers, for example, if you have large and small blowers on the same header? So, yes, it does. It all depends on um, if the manufacturer of those blowers uh, offers a controller for those. So as an example, Atlas Copco, uh, we can use the optimizing panel 
with uh, a couple of 350 horsepower turbo blowers and a couple of 100 horsepower or 50 horsepower screw blowers operating on the same header. So with that controller we talked about, you could control up to three different processes on three different headers and up to 30 different blowers with a single controller. So that's a great question. Thanks, Paul. All right. This brings us to the last cardinal rule of automation, and that's keeping separate things separate. So this is the idea that different processes operating at different flows or different pressures should have dedicated equipment, not a centralized system of supply. So here's an example at a site in Iowa. They had three different digesters that were all operating out of phase. They had different depths, which means they had different operating pressures. The deepest tank needs the most air. It has the most liquid in it. But the problem is it's going to have the most uh, resistance because it's got the highest depth. It's got the most uh, pressure, back pressure. And so the air naturally wants to go into digester two, the lowest level, where we need the least amount of air. So what they had to do was essentially close digester two's valve almost all the way, so it got the least amount of air. Open digester one's all the way, and then put digester three somewhere in the middle, so it'd get the middle amount of air. They couldn't actually accurately control their air into each of these digesters on this centralized supply system. So they've got everything set up right with the DO control for each digester that was feeding SCADA. SCADA was controlling the automated valves into each digester and SCADA was controlling each of the blowers. But because those digesters are essentially separate processes, uh, and the fact that these are centrifugal blowers, which means that pressure and flow are dependent variables, as we talked about a couple slides ago, when that pressure increases, uh, you're either going to go into surge or the blower is going to increase speed. And so they just had the hardest time getting this thing operating correctly. So instead, what they did is they changed out the turbo blowers for some positive displacement screw blowers and then they decentralized the system so they did that they reused those valves but instead of controlling airflow into each tank they just used them um, to separate the process header so they have got three duty blowers and one spare and they could be piped into any one of the digesters with those valves and now the blower feeds directly into each digester as the depth of the digester increases the do signal into SCADA tells that dedicated blower to increase its speed and then like in this example digester one is at the bottom it's going to tell blower number one to have minimum speed so they're able to maintain accurate control into each one of these digesters and because they're using screw blowers, which have a very wide operating range and are very efficient, even at turn down, uh, especially if you put a permanent magnet motor in there, uh, they were really able to optimize the efficiency and increase the amount of control they had over this process. So now, even if the, blow, the digesters are out of phase and the pressure is drastically different in each one of those, uh, the system's unaffected because all of the blowers are dedicated to each digester. It's no longer a centralized supply um, on different processes with different varying demands. So that actually reduced their power costs substantially in addition to eliminating all those nuisance trips and increasing the amount of process control they had. If we look uh, again at that same site in New Jersey, uh, we're going to add a new wrinkle in that each one of these aeration trains was essentially a separate plant. They had drastically different loads, as you can sort of see from the shading here, 
And so each one of these was really operating at a different DO set point. And so again, we've got a centralized supply with the blowers and drastically different varying demands uh, on the process side in each one of those trains. So add that to the mix with the three different brains, the operators trying to run the multi-state centrifugal blowers in hand, the blower PLC controlling the turbo blowers, and SCADA controlling those valves. And it was just a not fun time they had during commissioning this project. It took months and months uh, before they finally realized this three brain syndrome and were able to start honing in on a solution. So one of the easiest solutions uh, would be, A, let's do it right from the start. So instead of having SCADA control the valves, you're buying a new PLC anyways, let's add the IO to that PLC to control these valves and let's tie in, even if it's just the on and off of those multi-stage blowers and we keep that inlet throttle position fixed, then the whole system is controlled by one brain, the aeration PLC. So that means that when DO senses that aeration train five is right on the set point, but aeration train one is running high on DO, it can just throttle the control valve into basin one, and then it determines if it needs to adjust the speed of the blowers or turn another blower on or off. So you've got one brain doing all the thinking for the whole system instead of that three brain syndrome. And of course, the fact that we've got five different processes essentially on one common header. So here's another example where they have three multi-state centrifugal blowers all operating in hand feeding three aeration tanks. Those aeration tanks had DO monitoring on SCADA, but there was no DO control. So fortunately, those three tanks were tied together in one train, so they have approximately the same load in each, more or less. And so if they saw that DO was getting high or low from their desired set point, they would have the operators go manually throttle the inlet valve on a blower to reduce or increase the flow. And then if they saw um, changing throughout the season or they saw a quick spike or a quick drop in DO, they could go turn on or turn off another blower. But again, it wasn't efficient operation. And their biggest problem was with the multi-stage centrifugal blowers, although they're very efficient at a fixed design point, they have very, very poor turn down, about 30%. That means a 1,000 CFM multi-stage blower can only turn down to roughly 700 CFM. So they had control gaps between one blower running at full speed and two blowers running at minimum speed. And it was just difficult for them to get turned down in winter. They were severely over aerating, had DOs of four to six for most of the winter season. So they knew they had to get something, either a smaller blower, or a blower that could turn down more to save some energy in those winter months. So what they did was they replaced 150 horsepower multi-state centrifugal blower with a 100 horsepower rotary screw blower with integrated VFD. Now in this case, they wanted to make the rotary screw their year round duty blower it could turn down up to 80%, meaning that 1,000 CFM screw blower could turn down to almost 200 CFM. So it could handle the lowest flows in winter and it could handle most of the peak flows even through the spring months. Then when summer would come around and they saw that they'd be running the screw full on, excuse me, they're running it at full speed and it could no longer keep up with the uh, demand, they would go manually turn on another multi-stage but they had the screw blower tied in directly to SCADA that is something they hadn't done before but since they were monitoring DO it was very simple to add a 4 to 20 milliamp signal into the VFD in the screw blower so that throughout most of the year even if they've got a multi-stage handling the base load 
of the aeration in the plant in summer, the variable speed screw can still speed up, slow down to satisfy that diurnal loading, and it'll actually turn itself off if the demand is satisfied with just that multi-stage. So here's an example of where they tied in only one machine, but because they have such fixed flows and not as great a varying demand throughout the day, uh, they were able to keep this tied in separately and still automate this system with good precision. And as a result, they ended up saving about 20 to 30% on their energy bill through the winter months by being able to turn down that screw blower much lower than the multi-stage could before. And then in the summer months, they're saving about 10% uh, on their energy bill because the screw is automatically adjusting to the varying demand throughout the day. Thanks, Paul. This I'm going to launch the fourth question. What does keep separate things separate mean? Please select A, B, C, or D. I want to apologize on this one. I was very limited on how much space I had to put these answers in. No worries, about 80% has voted. Okay, I'm gonna close the poll. Share the results. D, all the above. Paul, we did have a question come in. Mm -hmm. Point of clarification. Did you say that you throttle the blower inlet valves? Is it okay to throttle an inlet valve? That's correct. So in a blower where we're moving air, which is a compressible fluid, uh, you always want to throttle the inlet instead of the discharge. So on blowers and compressors, yes, we throttle the inlets, never the discharge. When you throttle the discharge, you're increasing the system pressure, creating artificial demand. Um, but the blower is still going to deliver basically the same amount of flow at a higher pressure. When you throttle the inlet, the blower intakes less air, and so it delivers less air at the same system pressure. So on blowers, we always and compressors, we always throttle or modulate the inlets. On a multi-stage centrifugal blower, this is usually done by an electronically actuated butterfly valve, or it can be operated with a hand butterfly valve, as in the examples in Massachusetts and New Jersey. And then on large single-stage centrifugals, we typically use inlet guide vanes, but they operate essentially the same way. They open and close to increase or decrease the amount of flow through the blower. Great, Great thanks, question. Bob. Um, hold on just a second, and I'm just going to switch presenters and then switch it back. Okay, Paul, you should have control now. There we go. All right. Thanks, Sherry. So when automating aeration systems, we want to utilize the standard integrated controls that are available in new blowers. So that means if you're buying a rotary lobe, rotary screw, high-speed turbo, multi-stage centrifugal, single-stage centrifugal, whatever it may be, most blower vendors these days, the manufacturers offer a standard control solution that's available to you. We've designed these uh, based on feedback from years of manufacturing these products from you, the customers, 
and have listened to what you wanted in a blower and offer as a factory standard pre-engineered solution some really great options to monitor, control, and protect this equipment. Of course, you can still buy it with no controls from the blower vendor if you want to design it yourself, but most people want something where the blower manufacturer is going to take responsibility for the reliability and the efficiency of the system. And if you want that, then the blower manufacturer should be responsible for controlling that equipment. And you're going to want to specify how to connect that with SCADA or your plant control system, whether that's Ethernet IP, Modbus TCP, hardwired digital and analog communication, or if you're not even planning to connect it at all, right? Those are all different options, but can all lead you to choose a different technology or maybe a different control solution uh, offered from each manufacturer. Then you wanna automate the entire aeration system. So if you're going to have actuated valves, you're going to want to automate the blower control to have them turn on and off automatically and have them control the speed of the blower, the airflow, with the same process loop, control loop, as the valve logic. That's the important part, right? We wanna make sure if we have mostly open valve control that we're gonna have the same PLC or SCADA, whatever it may be, the same brain controls the blowers and the valves, the whole process. If you separate the control of the process, the valves in this case, from the control of the blowers, they can fight each other as we saw at that site in New Jersey. So we wanna avoid that, either use manual valves and fix their location in place. So you know you're always going to get the same amount of air or a little less over here, a little more over there, and then just control the speed of the blowers independently or have everything controlled automatically by one PLC or by your SCADA system. And then lastly, use dedicated pieces of equipment for processes with different static head, meaning different sidewater depths in case of aeration or digesters, and uh, different flow requirements. If you've got um, two basins and one always uses significantly less air than the other, centralizing the supply may not be the best solution. Uh, you might want to have a bl smaller blower dedicated to train two and a larger blower dedicated to train one, and then probably a larger common spare that you could pipe between the two for your backup. But again, if we go back to that digester example in Iowa, when you've got those different sidewater depths, you've got greatly varying demand, higher flows and pressures in one, lower flows and pressures in the other, when you're trying to operate a centralized supply into drastically different processes with different demands, uh, it's going to be extremely difficult for you to maintain control. You're gonna have nuisance shutdowns, you're gonna have higher maintenance from those shutdowns, and importantly, your power bill is going to be significantly higher. Uh, let's not forget, when we reduce our energy consumption, we eliminate those nuisance trips uh, and those problems with our process, we're gonna have lower um, operating costs as well. Which leads us to our last question. Great, thanks Paul. Number five, what is important to remember when automating aeration processes? Please select A, B, C, or D. Great, 80% of you have voted. I'm gonna close the poll, share the results. D, all the above. Thanks, Will. All right, Great. I see we have uh, a question on uh, Poll question number four. 
that someone wanted to uh, revisit. They wanted to know um, why was the answer not don't control blowers and valves with a common PLC. Uh, that's exactly what we want to do. So that's why the answer was not um, answer A. Uh, we want to control the blowers and the valves, as I was just mentioning, on the same uh, control loop. We don't want them separated. Otherwise, you're going to get those, uh, those two fighting each other. Are there any other questions? I realize I went a bit short. I uh, apologize for that, but if there are any other questions, we could certainly answer them now. Okay, well, thank you, Paul, and great job. And thank you all for spending some time with us today. We do have several blowers running locally if anyone would like to see them or any additional information. I just want to thank you all again, and please do not hesitate to email or call if you have any questions. And be sure to fill out the evaluation that will pop up when you close out. And great. Have a have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, everybody.